Today I'm going to be going through um, dot point two point two, which says describe the aspects of the experimental techniques used by Mendel that led to his success. This is a part of Blueprint of Life HSC Biology syllabus, and today we'll just be covering some techniques that he used for his experiment that made it so successful. So let's deconstruct the question. We want to look at the describe question. It's not asking for much, and um, essentially all we need to actually do is look at the characteristics and try and define what he actually did which made everything so successful. So we're looking at the aspects of the t experimental, t experimental techniques. So we'll have to look at the, the, the usual, you know, the reliability, validity, and you know, the accuracy part. So all these techniques that I'm going to be describing are going to be closely linked. Okay, so number one, he used a simple organism peas which grew quickly and had easily identifiable characteristics. Now what I mean by that is that since these peas were readily available to him and grew so very quickly he was able to use these um, efficiently because they had easily identifiable characteristics. And these characteristics could have been you know if one pea is green and one pea is yellow or one is tall and one is short just something that he could easily identify. Okay so moving on to the next point he purebred the initial pl pea plant for over two years before experimentation. And what this allowed is that since he purebred these plants, he was able to get some accurate results. And it, it was nothing that was, you know, done by false, uh, false experimentation or by error or by chance. Since he purebred and made sure that these pea plants were, you know, 100% type uh, look like this and 100% did this and had these characteristics, he was able to actually match these with his other characteristics that he found. Now, number three, he repeated his experiments thousands of times. Now, I cannot stress this enough. In any experiment, you must repeat it in order to ensure reliability to a certain extent. Um, our teacher says repeat it nine times, which is a very specific number. I don't know why. But um, just make sure you repeat an experiment. And that is what he did. Number four, he used mathematics to aid his theories. And what he actually did is, since he was very bright in mathematics at that time, uh, he was able to come up with theorems and all that. And with mathematics, he was able to support it and use the supplementary results that he got from these experiments to create these uh, equations to, I guess, match what he thought uh, the experiment showed. And that's exactly what he did in this. He used mathematics to aid him in his theories. Number five, he kept an accurate log of results and subsequent measurements. Now, when I say he kept an accurate log, I really mean so. I mean that every single time he like measured uh, how tall a pea, uh, pea plant is or me measured the amount of pea plants with this color and this color, he recorded it straight away and made sure he had all these measurements listed neatly or whatever, and he was able to refer to these whenever he needed to, needed to make his equations or make speculations on his theories based on these experiments. Number six, he studied traits with two easily identifiable tra uh, characteristics. So, um, sorry for the bad wording here, it's just a little mistake I made. <laughs> I'll just cross that out and replace it with characteristics. And what he was able to do is, since he did it in large sample sizes, it allowed for reliability. So, as I said before, reliability, you can get it by repeating the experiment. But in this case, he also got this by having a large sample size. Now, I really do hope this video helped, and, helped, and I hope you continue watching my videos. Thanks for watching.